for this day. We thank you for a day uh, set aside to remember Christ's resurrection. Uh, we also thank you for a time set aside to pray, just to, to be reminded that we are to be a people constantly praying and seeking your face. And I thank you, and I ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. We're going to be looking, continuing to look in Daniel chapter 9. And uh, we've looked at the first couple of verses. Uh, just a reminder that this is the first year of Darius, who was the king. And he was made king over the Chaldeans. It's been about 66 years since chapter 1. Thereabouts, and uh, we considered that Daniel was reading the scriptures. We don't know how, or where he got a copy, but uh, a copy was taken, or copies were taken, and he was able to read it. And in that, as it says in verse two, in the first year of his reign, I reign, I Daniel observed in the books the numbers of the years which was revealed as the word of the Lord to Jeremiah the prophet for the completion of the desolations of Jerusalem, namely 70 years. So he knew what time this was. He knew that it was near that time when the 70 years was about to close. And he was, I would think, looking forward to this time. Uh, but as we'll see, uh, Daniel's countenance and his attitude is not one of great joy, but it's of great somberness of solemnity because of the nation of Israel and what they had gone through. It says that in verse 3, So I gave my attention to the Lord God to seek him by prayer and supplications. Now, like I said, uh, or maybe I didn't say this, but you'd think there'd be great joy in in. Uh, Daniel's heart, Daniel's mind, because here is a time when instead of being in captivity, they're going to be returning to Israel. They're going to be returning to their beloved city, Jerusalem. But instead, as, as we see here, he is not in the greatest of spirits as far as just joy and overflowing with happiness, getting ready to go back. And I'd like to read just a portion of this because I think you'll see that as we read. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of Median descent, he who was made king, over, made king over the kingdom of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, observed in the books the number of the years which was revealed as the word of the Lord to Jeremiah the prophet for the completion of the desolations of Jerusalem, namely 70 years. So I gave my attention to the Lord God to seek him by prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. And I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed and said, Alas, O Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant and loving kindness for those who love him and keep his commandments. We have sinned, committed iniquity, acted wickedly, and rebelled, even turning aside from thy commandments and ordinances. Moreover, we have not listened to thy servants, the prophets, who spoke in thy name to our kings, our princes, our fathers, and all the people of the land. Righteousness belongs to thee, O Lord. And notice what he says. But to us open shame as it is this day. To the men of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem and all Israel, those who are nearby and those who are far away in all the countries to which thou hast driven them, because of their unfaithful deeds, which they have committed against thee. Open shame belongs to us, O Lord, to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. To the Lord our God belong compassion and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him. Nor have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his teachings, which he set before us through his servants, the prophets. Indeed, all Israel has transgressed thy law and turned aside, not obeying thy voice. So the curse has been poured out on us, along with the oath which is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God. For we have sinned against him. Thus he has confirmed his words, which he had spoken against us and against our rulers who ruled us, to bring on us great calamity. 
For under the whole heaven there, is, there has not been done anything like what was done to Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this calamity has come on us. Yet we have not sought the favor of the Lord our God by turning from our iniquity and giving attention to, the, to thy truth. Therefore the Lord has kept the calamity in store and brought it on us. For the Lord our God is righteous with respect to all his deeds which he has done. But we have not obeyed his voice. And now, O Lord, our God, who has brought thy people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and has made a name for thyself as it is this day, we have sinned, we have been wicked. O Lord, in accordance with all thy righteous acts, let now thine anger and thy wrath turn away from thy city, Jerusalem, thy holy mountain. For because of our sins and the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and thy people have become a reproach to all those around us. So now, so now, our God, listen to the prayer of thy servant and to his supplications. And for thy sake, O Lord, let thy face shine on thy desolate sanctuary. O my God, incline thine ear and hear. Open thine eyes and see our desolations and the city which is called by thy name. For we are not presenting our supplication before thee on account of any merits of our own, but on account of thy great compassion. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, listen and take action. For thine own sake, O my God, do not delay, because, of, because thy city and thy people are called by thy name. Now, as I mentioned, this isn't something joyous. This is something very somber. Here they are about to be given the opportunity to go back to their land, to go back to Jerusalem. And Daniel's not bursting out with joy. He's not bursting out with joy. And as, as you heard, as, as I read, there are a number of things that, that Daniel said just remembering their sin, remembering their iniquity, remembering their rebellion, their failure to listen to God. So you'd think he'd be with great joy, but he's not with great joy. He's not with, he was not with great joy, but I think we can be reminded of that ourselves. If we've done something wrong and God has made a promise to us to deliver us, there is going to be great joy, but there's also a reminder of our sin and that our sin has brought us to that place and can take us just as easily back to what we were doing before. And we need to have that same compassion and attitude that Daniel had. And when it begins in verse 3, it says, So I gave my attention to the Lord God to seek him by prayer and supplications, with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. The word is often, the word that's translated here, so, is often translated and. The context gives the setting for the translators to make a choice. It's a logical choice. So I gave my attention to the Lord God to seek him. If you have a, refer if you have a, a, a copy of the scriptures that has side notes or margin notes, you'll notice when it says, so I gave my attention to the Lord God, the literal words are set my face. He set his face to God. Now for us, you know, we know from back in, in the earlier chapters of Daniel, Daniel went home, so to speak, from his work, probably, and he had a place where he prayed. He prayed to, to back to the east where Jerusalem was every day. He was a person who set his mind, set his face to praying. And it says here, we see why he gave his attention to the Lord to seek him by prayer and supplications, with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. Daniel understood the implications of what he read, and it caused him to pray. And we said last time that it was the word of God, what he read, that caused him to pray. And it, we see that further here. So he set his mind, he gave his attention to pray. And what was it? that was in his heart and his mind. He might think that there would be great joy, like I said, but instead he understood the nature of their sin and he knew what had happened to them and why it happened. And it was heavy upon his mind. If you'll notice, I'm just going to 
just take a, a few minutes to go through some of the things he said. Uh, you know, just giving that picture of not being one with great joy, but one with great sorrow, with a great understanding of where they had come from and what they should be in mind. <clears throat> you notice in verse, verse 5 it says, We have sinned, we've committed iniquity, we've acted wickedly, we've rebelled. Verse 6, we have not listened to thy servants. He says, righteousness belongs to thee in verse 7, but to us open shame. And you can continue on down. It's not, it's not a great picture of great joy, but a great understanding of where they stood. And here they are. They're getting ready to go back to that land. But Daniel is remembering and the, the seriousness of what had brought them to where they are being in Babylon, in captivity, and people spread all over the earth because of their sin. Daniel is, by his wording, indicating that they were not free from what caused God's judgment on Jerusalem, Israel, and Judah. They were not free from that. So what did he do? As I said, as I mentioned there from verse 3, So I gave my attention to the Lord God to do what? To seek him. That was his purpose. His purpose wasn't to be overjoyed, to celebrate, but to seek him because he knew of his own sin and he knew of Israel's sin and he wanted to be sure to deal with that, not just to focus on the great joy that he could have that they were going back. You notice he says, to seek him by prayer and supplications. Prayer is a very general word. It means just simply to call out to God to come before him. Supplications is a Hebrew word which has a meaning of seeking favor and treaty, humble and earnest prayer, petition, earnest request. And how did he pray? It says, with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. This is very common, and I'd like to read two passages which reflect on this what Daniel is saying for himself. One is in Esther. Esther chapter 4. I'm going to read the first several verses here. When Mordecai learned that all had been done, all that had been done, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth and ashes, and went out into the midst of the city and wailed loudly and bitterly. And he went as far as the king's gate, for no one was to enter the king's gate clothed in sackcloth. And in each and every province where the command and decree of the king came, there was great mourning among the Jews with fasting, weeping, and wailing. And many lay on sackcloth and ashes. Now here's a good example where all three of those terms are used. And it's not a, great, it's not a picture of great joy. In fact, in that time, the Jews could have been wiped out. They could have been wiped out, but instead they're crying out to God, and God, as we know, would deliver them. There's another passage which uses all these three term, each of these three terms, and it's in Isaiah chapter 58. I'll read verses 1 to 5. Cry loudly, do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet and declare to my people their transgression and to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they may seek me by day, day by day and delight to know my ways as a nation that has done righteousness and has not forsaken the ordinance of their God. They ask, for, they ask me for just decisions. They delight in the nearness of God. Why have we fasted and thou dost not see? Why have we humbled ourselves and thou dost not notice? Behold, on the day of your fast, you find desire and drive hard on your workers." Behold, you fast with contention and strife, and to strike with a wicked fist. You do not fast like you do today to make your voice heard on high. Is it a fast like this which I chose a day for a man to humble himself? Is it for bowing one's head like a reed and for spreading out sackcloth and ashes as a bed? Will you call this a fast, even an acceptable day to the Lord? That's how Daniel approached God. He sought him by prayer and supplication with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. Not a great picture of 
a picture of great joy, but of seriousness and of an understanding of who he was and who their people were. So I just remind us as we have a time of prayer today that there's times when we are we can be very joyful at what God is going to do, but we should be reminded that the reason that he's even delivering us is because of our sin, because of our foolishness, because of our lack of obedience, our rebellion, whatever it might be. So just for me, for you, just to, just to be reminded who we are and how great God has been to us, how forgiving he has in the Lord Jesus Christ, and even today to remember that he rose to, from the dead to prove, to demonstrate his power over sin and death in our lives and the lives of those around us. So, Jim, I'll turn it over to you.